So it would seem that I finally have something to talk about and make a video about that suits this environment as a filming uh, backdrop. I'm Nick Holmes. I'm a fueling automation engineer, a voluntary rescue technician, and a passionate aviator. Join me as I take you through learning to fly and onto the adventures of backcountry aviation in South Africa. And yes, we survived an apocalypse. Yeah, essentially, we had 10 days of hell. Um, I'm going to put a whole lot of video clips up throughout this. Um, some of them mine, some of them uh, clips being sent to me um, of the whole civil unrest that we went through, um, the apocalyptic uh, landscape thereafter. Um, just, it was basically mayhem. Um, there was a 72 hour period that was really, really intense. Uh, it was a full blown civil war for, for 72 hours. Um, armed citizens against massive mobs of looters and um, arsonists. There was just this insane mission to loot and then set fire to the buildings. Um, yeah that's that's what we went through for a week and a bit i think it was anyway i lost a week of my life there um it was pretty insane anyway uh what we're gonna do is I'm going to deal with it on from two fronts. Um, there's a front of um, how overwhelmed the police were, um, and then there's a front of how order was restored by the armed citizen. Um, and literally, uh, shit you not, 12 gauge shotgun shells brought order back to this country. Give you an idea, um, and we as the civili armed civilians um, issued the police with just on 2,000 rounds of shells, um, and they went through that. They went through the 1,000 rounds of uh, baton rounds that they had, uh, these guys, they, they issued baton rounds, they had a 1,000 of them, uh, they went through those in Sure. I don't know. Three hours or something, four hours. I don't know what it was. It was it was just ridiculous. Um, and then we restocked them with uh, whatever shotgun shells we had, and the fight continued. But essentially, the police were incredibly overwhelmed. This is a lesson to American viewers especially. Year on year for the last 10 years, the national policing budget has been chopped. Chopped, 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 chopped. Essentially defunding the police, which is what there was a big drive for last year in, in the States. Be very, very careful. You get to the situation we were in, where you have 
mass civil unrest, violent civil unrest, armed personnel in the civil unrest with illegal weapons. There was no licensed firearms involved in that crap. Pretty damn certain of it. And the police did not have the capability. They did not have the manpower. They did not have the ammunition. They just simply didn't have the capacity to deal with the, the uprising. <laughs> I left my kids for this nonsense. Look! Hey, hey, get it, get it, get it, get it. I've been waiting the whole night for this nonsense. Hey, she, she, someone. Man, 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 Got to the point where they were pulling police resources from all over the country. Um, we had um, the public order policing divisions from the Western Cape coming through to, to our area, to, to Durban, um, from Pretoria. The, the police contingent we got of about seven or eight guys, I think it was, for that were to basically um, hold the shopping mall that was trying to be targeted in our area uh, they were, those guys came from Pretoria um, they had traveled all day it's a six and a half hour drive from Pretoria to, to Durban um, they had been allocated our uh, area to to deal with they arrived here 6 p.m. or so 7 p.m. I think on the Monday night and they arrived into a running gun battle. We were already engaged in in these crowds. It's the security, uh, private security that were around. They were engaged in these crowds already. Um, these the, the police arrived. They literally arrived, debussed, and started opening fire. Um, and that just went for days. Um, these guys ran out of food. They ran out of ammunition as already spoken about uh, they didn't have any liquids so the civilians we restocked them uh, the following morning when the, when there was a lull period and we could safely move to their point uh, we moved to their point um, ascertained their situation arranged them uh, some rations got them restocked got them restocked with ammunition again fell back to our spot and we worked with the police like that for three days um, yeah, post-apocalyptic, the shops got trolled. We had no food. This um, might be more difficult than I thought. Supply chains got trolled. There was no stock coming in. Um, they had burnt and looted uh, the distribution centers. Um, It was literally apocalyptic um, and still now like order is restored, some form of normality has restored, 
but there's just, if you go through certain areas, I mean, I, on my way into the office every day, I drive through the one area that got hit hard. There's just burnt buildings left and right of the freeway. Um, there's just burnt out trucks in the yards. Uh, there's just, it's, it's still very, very apocalyptic and eerie. Um, those, those areas are dead quiet. They used to be bustling halves of activity. Just. You're about to lose me Just like that, just like that Just like that, just like that Forever's never gone so fast Just, just fucking distraction wherever you look. Absolutely everything is just trucks, 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 trucks. Not one left alone. Every single one completely fucked. Everything. I mean, I don't know what this thing is here. We've got medical supplies, seats. We've got a whole seat. Check at this. So you don't rebuild companies like this. They just close down and disappear. And jobs, jobs just disappear. And tax money just disappears. And livelihoods just disappeared. We would have been in a dire situation and in a spot that would be a lot worse than we are if it had not been for armed citizens. Legally armed, of course. We got together, we formed um, these cluster militias and essentially you just guarded an area. Um, us on our housing estate here um, we've got a secure perimeter, which we we discovered was only as secure as itself, um, if that makes any sense. But there was an attempted breach. Um, we didn't get shot at. Uh, we spent a lot of time from within the perimeter um, assisting the police who were on the outside of the perimeter engaging on a... Um, there's a, there was a hard, there's a highway that runs past um, and there's an off ramp that goes to the two shops, shopping centers and they had hit this one in the morning, um, looted the bottle store, tried to, tried to loot the other store. Um, they had the intention of setting the building a lot, uh, but we, we managed to contain that. But there was just waves coming back and attempting all the time. So we, we had a, a throttling point. Um, uh, we had police services on a bridge overhead the highway um, and then the off-ramp came right past our fence line and we were throttling them with, with uh, gunfire across basically in, in a, a traditional triangulation sort of method. We had shotgun from this side, shotguns from that side and uh, keeping them under control. Um, yeah, obviously like I said we got shot at. Um, I was the only person who had body armor uh, in our side so it was quite stressful because I was like, if you, you felt that you almost had to be at the front. Um, but anyway, be it as it may, listen to everybody, arm yourself, train, be prepared. The shit happens. And we're out of it. We're, we're lucky. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave you with a whole bunch of footage from pre apocalypse to post apocalypse to end the apocalypse um, anyway hit us a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and uh, we'll bring you something a little less intense in the coming weeks I guess I want to allow that should former president uh, president Zuma allow himself or agree to that we will stop that from happening.
and if ever there is bloodshed, so be it. If you are in a situation of war, so be it. Guys, this is live right now at Macro. Hundreds of looters trying to get into Macro. Hundreds of them being dispersed by security, tear gas. They're now trying to run over the wall into the, the bigger warehouse in Macro, where there's less security. There's a, there's a helicopter, private security, trying to get rid of all of them. That's it, guys. Wow, that's either 12 gauge or tear gas. This is right here. Kenobia slash Mshlanga Macro. Check out, we are, we are water crest mall, two cars on set on fire, guys are still carrying on, I don't know if you can see that, it's just absolute pandemonium here, so unnecessary, so uncalled for. Absolute destruction that has happened. And I'm standing here waiting for a flight of blood to come in. And I think it's got to be my plane now. Alright, so this has been 90 Drive now this morning. Cars shot out, left chair. Millions of rands worth of stuff littering everywhere. Massive warehouse on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Petrol station yeah, yeah. looted. Appliances and millions of rounds of stuff all over. Trucks, forklifts all over the road. You can hear some shots in the background. Millions of rounds of stuff. Like. Trucks abandoned everywhere. 